Hey YouTube, it's been quite a while since the last video update and I suppose with COVID and then the supply chain issues and now everybody flirting with the idea of World War III, um, yeah, that's just the current state of the world. Um, but I did want to take some time to give you a look at Lieber Felixifer. Uh, this is a book that came out, I think, well, at least when it was released in this third edition, it had come out 13 years ago. Um, so it's a book that I've been curious about for quite a while, but um, usually it gets quite pricey. And this is a trilogy, so I'm really hoping that they're going to re-release uh, volumes 2 and 3 as well. Um, because what I've read uh, in this book... Uh, is very intriguing to me, and it's something that I would like to pursue further. Um, let's take a closer look here at some of the details. has this nice high gloss um, finish, this dust jacket. And then underneath, once we remove it, we can see some more details of the uh, the sigil, and of course got the gold lettering, XR Publications, the Book of the Left-Handed Reaper. Uh, now I didn't know to what detail it would go through um, within this book, and you can see here it's pretty low number. I got the pre-order very soon uh, after it went up on the website, number 63 of 1300. And it's about the, the Lord of Death. And I really like uh, the way this book presents the information. Uh, it talks about the Argentinian cult of Señor La Morte. And a lot of people have seen uh, that the deity uh, or an idol to it without realizing it. Um, but it talks about the origins, the feast days, the different cults that there are, the open cults, which are more uh, what some would call white magic or healing, and the closed cults, which are more cursing and baneful and, and death curses. It talks about the talisman and how you'd want to make it. And then part two the Kayanic tradition and it gets into the, the pagan roots and uh, number 16 here sorry page 71 uh, I really enjoyed that uh, the further details that were given about Cain and killing his brother and it, it talks about how those familiar with the biblical story where Abel's offering went up to heaven because it pleased God. Uh, but if you research such Acre or the other side, um, left-handed path in general, the Clyphoth and, and all those elements, uh, the snake came up from such Acre and had Eve eat the apple and also impregnated her, which is where Cain came from. And when he made his offering, it descended to the earth. It didn't rise up because it was accepted by Thonic deities, more or less. as a very quick abridged version. <laughs> um, so that ties in very well with Cain being the, the first uh, sorcerer, if you will. And really a lot of it, uh, you can see here, that's chapters 1 through the beginning of 10. There's the idol that you would want. Human or animal bone. You can use other things, but human or animal bone is the one that will give you the best results, being it was taken from an actual living uh, being. Talks about the types of offerings you would want to make. Uh, myrrh or patchouli incense. Um... You'd make an offering between midnight and 3 a.m. Usually sliced onions, dark chocolate, unsalted popcorn, 
various types of liquor. Um, these are some spells that you can use. And uh, by using the powers of this deity. Also, it's very important to never use salt. If you want to pause the video and take a guess, that's fine. But uh, with all of its preservative features, that is not something that would be wanted at all by a deity that is associated with death. Uh, it also goes into some of the details of how you would set up the altar. Uh, it would be close to the ground, because again, that's where the Athonic forces would uh, dwell, or do dwell. And it uh, talks about the, the specifications of what you would want and need on that altar. And these are some keys. And it kind of gives you in that first paragraph there, it kind of tells you what the key can be used for. And towards the end, <clears throat> gives you some of the more um, intricate workings, some of the tools that you would create. And how to create some, some various items as well. So one thing that was also interesting to me is the, the idol itself, um, the little small one that can be made of human or animal bone. One detail about that is a lot of people will have the idol made by itself, just the body, and then they will provide it with the tools like a, a scythe or a miniature golden scythe. And as more and more uh, blessings come from the deity, uh, they would increase the gold items given to uh, the idol on the altar. There's also a gift box for collecting. So as you get blessings from this deity or they perform the works that you have requested, you would give it money, typically some kind of gold. And uh, eventually once your coffer is full, you would take it to a goldsmith and he would, once enough gold has been acquired, basically give it a golden bath of sorts where your whole idol is then covered in gold. So it shows long-term dedication and effort put into the work and you receiving these blessings to actually get a physical manifestation of a reminder of, of how far things have come since you began which is a, a quite powerful catalyst or even a fetish if you want to use that term. So overall, uh, the book, again, was very interesting. It is something that I would like to research some more and possibly pursue in the future. Right now, I've got some other workings that I'm doing that are also very long. Um, so this is something that I want to do, just not at the present moment. It's not something I want to take on flippantly, and it's something that uh, deserves a lot of respect, just as anything would before you begin going on a journey like this. Um, there are, as a side note, there are a lot of correlations to Saturn and or Samael. So working with Saturn would also be very close to this book. Anything with the scythe and the reaper and the end of life and the rebirth cycle, those are all going to have a lot of overlapping um, trends or iconography. So um, if you've worked this book before, if you have any questions, let me know. I think you can still find this third edition floating around online for about $100, $130. Um, but I definitely recommend it if you are of the left-hand path. And let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next video.